Hello and welcome to episode 2 of the Ultra Nova Devlog and we are going to continue right where we left off at week 4 into development when I came to the realization that I'm not going to be releasing this game the following month it deserves a little bit more attention and probably a lot more attention. I had some feedback in the YouTube comments and also in my Discord server from some frequent people there saying that it looks really cool, but the story is uh, sort of lacking. In other ways, some people said it sucked pretty bad. <laughs> and I really want to give it the chance that it deserves. So I'm getting some help on the storytelling part and also the character creation, what type of characters you should encounter in this game. So back to the drawing board and created the, the second version of the game design document. And that's really taking shape now. So this is where I'm getting help and I'll be able to give a, a bit of a more official announcement on this one. Just have to do some double checking first to make sure I don't say anything I shouldn't say. <laughs> And I'm not going to reveal any details because this is, after all, an action adventure platformer. So I'm going to leave the story up to the players to discover. But to give you an idea what the game design document contains, I've taken a lot more care to think about the players, the objectives, the rules and the mechanics of the game, the resource types. So we've got health, energy, what type of items are there? Should, be, should there be a time limit? Should there not be a time limit? What type of augmentations? What's the story all about? What's the Steam page going to be? Because that's the face out for any game. That's very important that the key art and the story there is compact and to the point so you can actually tell people hey here's a game that you probably want to get and then it's going through the levels which I'm going to blur out because I don't want to give it away but it's going to be an overview an intro cutscene and you start at the wrecked spaceship scene that's all I'm going to reveal then you've got a whole bunch of different levels coming after that until the game ends and then I've gone through to think what type of enemies should you encounter what are the enemy mechanics and how to avoid them and I've also detailed all the bosses that you'll encounter there'll be quite a few of them they'll also have their special attack patterns and vulnerabilities so you have to learn those and leverage your augmentations and then your acquired skills to defeat those bosses. And another addition, which uh, I actually I spoke to my son who came up with this idea because I said, should I make a traditional platformer where you just go from start to finish like a Super Mario Brothers or something? And he said, it would be cool if you could actually do some trading or do some side quests and things like that. And that got me thinking. And this is where I'm also getting help from. Uh, so uh, Gisilra in the Discord, I'll just name drop a little bit anyway. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, hopefully I'll be able to tell people more more about what the stuff that you've been doing because you're doing some really cool narration and like the story is really taking shape so you're going to be bumping into these different traders and some of them will be required because you need some of the special abilities and the different augmentations to increase your chances or even required some of the special abilities like the jetpack for example or the grapple hook you will need to get those in order to complete the game and then there are also side quests that you can do so you don't have to do those but if you want to find out more about the story and what's going on inside this game you'll be able to take those side quests and boost up your final score of course and discover more of the game and also learn some things about the the narrative of the whole story and without revealing too much if we just look at the basic stuff here in the beginning definitely making a one player versus the game system game and you'll be able to compete in terms of uh, a leaderboard and achievements so you can collect things but it's not going to be a multiplayer mode but you can try to complete the game as fast as possible with losing as few lives as possible and earning as much uh, in-game currency as possible there'll be different ways you can compete that way and then for the objectives it's a chase race escape you have to navigate through the levels and avoid hazards through movement second objective is survive you have to survive by maintaining a health over zero you have to destroy enemies and bosses to permit the progression and you have to solve puzzles and um, opening gates disabling hazards the focus is not going to be on puzzle solving it's more an action adventure platformer than a puzzle platformer but there'll be some elements of those and then you can also collect items and some of them will be required and some will boost your resources and some are pure vanity items just to to say that you managed to find all the pieces of the artifacts and when it comes to the setup of the game it's not going to be a procedural game I'm going to design all the levels and I've thought through all the different topics and what type of things that you'll encounter and it'll be a story within the game for each level that ties it all together in the end and then another important part here is what happens when you die <laughs> and are you going to respawn at a checkpoint do you have to have some in-game currency to create your own checkpoints should the checkpoints be visible or should they not so here i'm actually looking at different type of games and how they've solved it i want to reduce the player frustration and increase the exploration and the excitement so we'll see what type of a, a solution will be implemented in the end there'll be a bunch of power-up items that you can collect for temporary boosting the rifle and the way you your uh, energy resource management works and there'll also be more permanent augmentations where you can buy these from the traders so when you kill an enemy it'll basically drop some loot or scrap and then you can sell those to traders gain currency and then you can actually 
pick what type of augmentations that you want. Do you want to boost your rifle capability? Do you want to boost your energy regeneration capability? Reduce the energy consumption when you use your jackpack. So you'll be able to customize your character and figure out how you prefer to play the game. Difficulty levels are always tricky. You don't want to make the game too easy. You don't want to make the game too hard. So you want to try to minimize the number of players that get frustrated and maximize the number of players who enjoy the game and think that the pacing is good. So I'm going to try to find that balance through the playtesting and try to make it so that you can complete the game without getting a doctor's degree in uh, finger dexterity. And one of the ideas is that since I removed the helmet of the character for the intro cutscene, well now I can actually animate the, using dynamic physics, I can animate the hair. So if you complete the game once, then you'll unlock the ability to remove the helmet that will make it more difficult because you'll take more damage you'll reduce your life respawning capabilities. But my son had a cool idea there. What about if the heads up display or the HUD was inside the helmet? So basically, if you play it without the helmet, then you don't get the in-game UI. So you don't necessarily know what your energy levels or your health are. It'll be basically like in real life, you run around with a rifle. Well, hopefully you don't, but if you do, then if you fire 12 shots, then you'll know that, okay, it's a 30 round magazine. So I've got 18 bullets left. I've also detailed the different player actions, the technical systems and the story. It's going to be pretty cool to follow. Like there's a whole backstory to why Nova is on the planet and what's going on and how she should get off it. Here is also where I found some good use of uh, AI art generation. I put some prompts in for the different type of levels that I had and it could generate some random ideas, basically like concept art for each of the different levels that I've got. I did the same for the bosses as well, just so I could get some ideas of mechanical spiders and big drone ships and tank modifications. And, and those are all just going to be like visual guidance when I go, okay, I'll take some elements from that. That looks cool. But everything will come down to custom 3D modeling in the end. The reason why I spend so much time and focus on the game design document and where I'm getting some help on it as well, it's because I've spent 20 years making prototypes and loot and dare type of games and they, none of them have been fun. And it took me a long time to realize that I should ask myself the question, why are the games not fun? So I had to go back to the drawing board and learn like, what is the difference now? Why aren't the games that I've been producing in the past fun? And I also came to that realization in Line War because a lot of the ideas that are in that game comes from many years of uh, designing a game system on a board game and play testing it to make sure that it's balanced, it's fun and everything must have a purpose. If I had to rewind the tape and start to create a multiplayer RTS myself, I would have probably just brainstormed some like 20, 30, 40 different type of units and thought oh, that'll be cool. I'll do like a mech warrior there. I'll do a, a triple barreled tank here. The whole thing is that you have to think about the concept and everything has to make sense. It has to be a purpose for everything. And that's where I'm putting a lot of focus now in the game design of Ultranova. So I started to read a few books. I got the Designing Games, a guide to engineering experiences by Tynan Sylvester. Found a cool game design concepts WordPress site from 2009. I haven't heard that in a while by Ian Schreiber. I thought that was contained a lot of cool stuff about game systems and what to think about. And then I researched other successful platformers. I did a really in-depth analysis of Hollow Knight. You can check that video. The link is going to be in the description or in my channel history. And I started to look into what makes the game so great. How come it's such a big success? And that's a Metroidvania game. And it also learned me that I'm not going to be able to make a Metroidvania for Ultranova. So I'm going to make more of a traditional action adventure platformer because it's so complicated and it takes a lot more time and resources to make a Metroidvania. Maybe I'll come to that in the future at some point. I also looked at some other precision platformers like Celeste, which is a, a cool, successful game. And I know that I don't want to make a precision platformer because you die like 300 times or something in the first world <laughs> because you have to really memorize those little dash, dash, double jump, wall jump, climb, climb, jump, jump. And that's not what this game is going to be about. It's going to have those elements, but it's going to be gradually introduced. So you find a balance there, some in between. I'm also looking at some other games like Ori, a beautiful platformer, and maybe I'll get some visual hints from that. And of course, my all-time favorite historically is Torrican 2. It's got a lot of good reviews but it is old and it's very unforgiving so I have to be careful of what type of the stuff that I put from there but I think a lot of the visual aspects and the roboticness and the space synth theme stuff is going to come from there but not so maybe not so much the game design itself. And then when it comes to level design so in the first approach in the prototype that I made in Unity I actually just created the blocks and randomly sort of assembled them and play tested it as I go and I'm a little bit torn on how to do it 
for the for the next iteration of the game now. Because when you look at games, for example, Celeste again, I looked at a GDC tour and everything is blocked out and everything has a purpose in the game design itself. There's no spikes just randomly placed there. They're there for a good reason. And the ledges are certain heights for very good reasons. The blocks uh, could be movable and there's, there should be a path that you find out and you should be rewarded when you learn how to behave in the game. What I'll have to do is I'll block out the levels first and play test it and then I'll just make sure that the specifications of the block sizes are correct so I can model all the art retroactively. So the initial prototype that you saw in the last video, I created all of that in a matter of three weeks. All the modeling, all the game development, uh, all the concepts, everything was done inside of three weeks. I know Unity so well, I've worked with it for 13 years now, but time has come for things to change and I've been postponing and postponing to learn Unreal Engine for so long. I've been meaning to learn it for at least four or five years. The reason why I want to learn it, the main reason was that I want to be able to understand the engine so when I create content for my YouTube channel, I'll be able to guide players to Unity and to Unreal Engine based on what people prefer and what the pros and cons are of the different engines. I also create game assets that I want to make sure that they're compatible for both engines, so that's another reason for learning it. I thought this is going to be the time now I'm going to test out what the visuals are going to be like in uh, Unreal Engine. And when I played around with the meshes, I imported them into Unreal Engine and I saw the beautiful lighting that Lumen presents and I understood that I can just cram millions of polygons in thanks to Nanite and the performance that you get. And there was no rendering pipelines to consider. Beautiful straight off the bat and I was really happy with the visual result and it sort of confirmed that I want to go that route. But that means slowing down my development process a lot. Everything that I know in Unity, it's going to take time and to translate that understanding into Unreal Engine. And they're two very different engines. I'll probably make a dedicated video about this at some point, but one of the things I've realized between Unity and Unreal Engine is that I call Unity a game engine, and I'm calling Unreal Engine more and more an advanced game editor. And why I say that is because you get a blank sheet of paper when you start a blank Unity project. Everything is there, you just create your hierarchy, you have to create your game states, you have to control all the camera stuff. Uh, there's no concept of a player in the game. There's no concept of ground or anything like that. You can design any type of game that you want in Unity and it's gonna be a blank canvas from the start. In Unreal Engine, on the other hand, it's a lot geared for stuff that they know what you need when you're gonna make a game. You're gonna need game states. You're gonna need uh, probably a player with a ground concept. Everything that you usually find in a game is already predefined and it exists in Unreal Engine and you have to find where it is and you have to configure it and modify it to your liking. That's why I call it more of a game editor than a game engine because you just have to learn how to adapt it to your needs. And you can make any game in Unreal Engine. It's not a question about that. It's just a different approach on how you work with it. And then with it being Epic, I thought, hey, this is good. If I switch to Unreal Engine, maybe I can apply for the Epic Mega Grant. So I did that and I thought, this is a long shot because who's going to be supporting financially a platformer? It's not like enough of those in the world. After a couple of months, I got the reply, thanks, but uh, no, you're not successful for the mega grant. So in my process, I had to set out to start learning Unreal Engine. So I looked at a few development courses, both one from Udemy and also from gamedev.tv. I recommend the gamedev.tv courses. They're really, really good. Also, I always like to experiment. So I spent a lot of time in Unreal Engine and just try to understand how things work. I especially looked at recreating uh, a landscape with uh, basically like a, the way Fortnite uh, handles the terrain blending and the different materials. And this is where I fell in love with the way Unreal Engines renders everything. So I put my low poly characters in the scene, I created my little landscape and did some very crude texture painting. I put some trees in, just poured polygons in thanks to Nanite, and then I used the particle system, the Niagara, and the water systems, everything like that. I'm like, okay, it's gonna take time, but it's gonna be worth it. So this is back in June now, and we're in November, so okay, what else did I do during this time span? Well, I had a lot of stuff to do. As I was toning down my line war development, when I say toning down, I'm still doing uh, contracting work for that, so it still fills up a lot of my week, doing a lot of the development there. We're working on the single player now. But other than that, I had to recreate my website, first of all, because uh, it's actually over 10 years old and some of the functionality wasn't working. So I had to rebuild my web server, first of all. Everything that I want to do now is make things simpler, 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 simpler. So I compact at my big weirdo corporate uh, it was nice the website but it, it was just too much stuff going on so i really trimmed it down to a super compact uh, website so i could easily maintain it and then put focus on the game assets if people want to do that and if they want to support me through patreon the new website is geared towards like simple find your information get your assets and uh, if you want to support me on patreon like here's how you do it and here's the reward that you get because you get a lot of game development assets if you support me on patreon 
Hint, hint. <laughs> I also created a Ludum Dare game for the first time in a couple of years again. That was a lot of fun. Low poly, of course. And then I created the new Infancia Pixpal texture. A lot of care and thought went into designing that palette because I've had some issues with my old one and the new one supports all sorts of cool features like shiny reflective materials, metallic surfaces, you've got the neon glows and also a panning texture to, so you can actually animate a few flickering lights and things like that. So I created that one and released that as a Creative Commons Zero, so public domain. You can use that for whatever you want. And then I created some low poly characters, about 134 of them. Uh, I created a YouTube course and taught everyone how to model those type of characters. So that's a free YouTube course. Check out for the yellow thumbnail in my channel history. You can learn how to create these simple low poly characters and uh, I created that into an asset pack that I sell on my website as well and I reward my patrons with that. And then following those characters, I modeled another asset packs with a lot of interiors for the low poly assets because one thing that I found is that if I put time and effort into my assets, they'll make me some money over time because I can sell those both in the Unity Asset Store and on my own website and also on the coming fab.com website, which is gonna be a cool thing from Epic. And I found that if I do these type of things, I can fund my development. So it's worth to spend the time to do it, even if it's time consuming and it takes a bit of time from the game development, but it all has the balance in the end. I also updated my universal sound effects package because I realized that it had been quite a few years since I did that. And I updated that on the Unity Asset Store and on my website. So if you need 7,000 or more generic sound effects for any type of game genre, you should check that asset out. It's super cheap and you can just get cracking and get your sounds right into your game. And then I've also been doing the 10 minute modeling challenges every now and then most of the Thursdays I do it and then I missed a few and I've spent more time in my own discord server and I managed to reduce my inbox from about 3,000 emails down to zero so it's an empty inbox now and I'm trying to stay on top of that so you can actually contact me through my website if you need not I should be able to see it these days and then of course I've been spending time in the game design document and we also moved from a house so we moved to Australia last year but now this year we have actually last month we moved to a different house but in the same area so that move was a little bit easier and this brings us to the present and in the next video, I'll show you when I started to grab my 3D assets and I'm pulling them into Unreal Engine. And I've removed the helmet as well because I needed to model some hair for the intro cutscene. I'm really happy with the way it looks in Unreal Engine. So come back to the next video and I'll take you through the journey and uh, what I encountered when I started to import those. Give it a thumbs up if you liked the video, subscribe if you haven't already. And if you want to support the game development, head over to patreon.com slash Infancia. I've got some cool game asset rewards there for some of the tiers. And also, if you want to support Ultra Nova, consider wishlisting it on Steam. It's already there. It's got a page. Until next one, have a great one and I'll see you then. Bye for now.